Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome two of the three chairs of this joint conference. So we have on my right Dave René, President of the International Solar Energy Society, and we have Ken Guthrie, who is Chair of the Solar Heating and Cooling Program of the IEA. You had a special occasion here because you joined your conferences. Tell me why was that? Well, the International Solar Energy Society has long held these congresses every two years since 1970 and has always had both a photovoltaics as well as a solar heating and cooling track in its conferences. And so we felt like since we're coming to a place where both of these technologies have strong application, it would be good to join the conferences here in Abu Dhabi. Well, how was your attitude on that? Oh, look, we, uh, we saw it as a, as a great opportunity to work together with the International Solar Energy Society because uh, it brought a bigger audience and, uh, and it gave us an opportunity to, to look across different technologies and, and learn from each other. So uh, it, it was definitely worthwhile. We have 500 people gathered here in a very beautiful hotel in the middle of Abu Dhabi. Why did you choose this uh, particular place? Well, a few years ago, the Mazdar Institute, which is now part of Khalifa University for Science and Technology, approached ISIS to see if they, we, they could host one of our Solar World Congresses. And we, uh, realizing that we had never been in the Middle East before and seeing all the solar development that's taking place here, we thought this was an excellent opportunity and we uh, accepted their invitation and worked together with them very closely to organize this Congress. Is uh, solar cooling a big issue in your program? So you're happy here as well with this uh, site? Yes, solar cooling is a big issue. And, and one of the advantages of coming here was with Mazdar Institute, they made available rooms for us to have uh, our task meetings here, our research tasks that we run on solar cooling and uh, global solar certification and uh, large-scale solar systems. So it was, uh, and we had a lot of a lot of local representation from around the, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, so it, all in all, it was a really good opportunity for us. How about uh, PV and solar thermal? I mean, they are in the market in a certain competition, you know. They compete about the roof, they compete about resources, financing, and attention in the media. The researchers understand each other here? Oh, look, uh, sometimes there's a bit of tension, but generally uh, it's, people like to learn from each other and see what's working well for different sectors and what could be adopted and adapted to, to work elsewhere so that we get the the full benefit of the full energy system. So we have anyway the challenge to tackle the energy system which is complex, so is there a need to work together? Yes, I think there is, and I think there's a, a logical way for these technologies to be working together. It's, sure, it's, un, it's understandable now that PV prices have come way down, and so these, there's a lot of electrification taking place in the heating sector as well as in the transport sector. I think that's an, a trend that's going to continue, but nevertheless there are still significant niche markets for um, each technology, and it's certainly for solar thermal technologies, especially if you look at district heating applications or industrial process heat applications, and even in, in many developing countries and in some developed countries for that matter, solar heat um, through solar heating te thermal technologies is still a much more viable option than PV electrifying the heating system that way. We are almost at the end of a long conference week. So what is your personal takeaway? Did you have any particular issues that, or motivations that you take with you? Well, look, to me, it was that the, the energy system is complex and there's going to be no simple answer. So there will be a place for all the technologies to, to get together, for, to get to move to 100% renewable energy, which is vital if we're going to achieve the, the uh, climate change mitigation that we need. Okay, and you, your personal well, takeaway? I, I certainly agree with what Ken said, but, and beyond that I noticed that there's a lot of young people here, a lot of young professionals as well as students, and I think I saw them networking around here and, and learning a lot and also bringing their knowledge to the conference, and for me that indicates that there's a very bright future for these technologies because there's a workforce uh, developing now and it's going to be readily available for a very significantly expanded application of these technologies in the future. Thank you very much and have a nice conference dinner tonight. Thank you. Thank you.